Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. This is another channel for you, a conversation that I'm going to have with someone in the afterlife that you will recognize. Remember at Above Life Channel, the purpose here is to inspire your spirit, to fill you up with hope because it's your life. So live it. Today we are going to have, um, I'm going to call her a bit of a guru. Let's just call her guru. <laughs> if, uh, if anyone's worthy of that, they, it certainly would be this uh, lady in the afterlife. Um, ladies and gentlemen of the audience, please welcome Ms. Louise Hay. You may know Ms. Hay from her uh, incredible publishing company that was cutting edge and really opened up the doorway of opportunity for many authors and aspiring writers in a multitude of areas related to, to, to health, wellness, spirituality, new age. At that time, it was considered taboo and she has brought to us just an abundance of authors and and incredible works that I am so personally appreciative for. I think it's incredible. And so I want to say thank you for that, for everyone who's watching, who loves um, the Hay House Publishing, uh, the all of the resources and, and the learning that you have put forward because of your company. We want to say thank you. I want to say thank you. And so welcome. She says, oh, it's, it's my pleasure. She's lovely. You look, she looks like an actress. Like she could be a Hollywood type because she, I mean, she's beautiful. You are truly beautiful outside and inside. And I just want to acknowledge that in the afterlife. She definitely has a glow about her. Her spirit is so light. It's very, just, it's got this um, kind of a, it's just, it's what really white, white light and a little bit of a gold into it, and a lot of pink energy, a lot of Archangel Hanel, and uh, which is an Archangel that really helps with you know nurturing, loving, very heart chakra energy, and it is, that's what I feel. And I'm really excited, so I have lots of questions for you just about what you've learned over your lifetime, and then reflecting back, you had a lot of work about affirmations and positive affirmations, like looking into the mirror and telling yourself that you love I love you, I love you. Different kinds of card decks and books about healing, self-healing. And I just, I would like, to, I, I just, there's so much. There's such a library here. Um, there's so many questions. First of all, Luis, I would like to know <laughs> if you could describe for us your transition, that moment that you had that freedom from your physical body and stepped into what you are now experiencing as the afterlife. And if you could talk to us about that, that would be fabulous. And then she says, she shows me a picture of Wayne Dyer, that Wayne is here as well. They were very good friends in the human life. And in the afterlife, apparently they are collaborating, continuing to co-collaborate. Fantastic, good to know. And she says, why don't you ask me about what you really want to know about? I'm like, okay, which is abundance. I was going to talk to her about abundance and the topic of abundance um, because it feels like that's what's really present right now and for me, and it feels like that's the gateway to your work really is all about this abundance and the mindsets of lack and self-worth and worthiness. It really feels like your, a lot of your work, your self-care work, your affirmation work, your healing, you can heal yourself work really set the stage for what truly could be described as just abundance, an abundance mindset, an abundance heart set, an abundance soul uh, realization or revelation. Let's say that. She says, how about revolution, soul revolution? I'm like, okay, wow, yeah, you are really a advocate, aren't you? And I know you are. I know you are. I know you're, you're, uh, you're the backstory around you starting your publishing company and why and you know, kind of being like, this is ridiculous. We got to, you know, these, these authors, this needs to be shared and people shouldn't be discriminated against. And so I totally respect that. I love that. But now we're diverting from the question I asked you, which is about the transition. People, I think, would be fast. I, I'm interested to know how your particular transition went. You know, um, she's saying, it really is indeed a miracle. 
and I'm not sure how much I should reveal about this and mostly because not because it's a secret it's it's not a big secret that moment of dying and stepping into eternal life it's not a big secret but because it is so so personal and you I know you know this because you have experienced it through the eyes of many many spirits and you understand that it is personal and when I say personal in nature I do not mean that it is something only the person can know or between that person and their life experience more so that it is personal as in customized individual an individual experience and isn't that what we always wanted in our human life we strived for the uniqueness we strived for originality but we struggled with all of the consequences that came from that those desires to be unique and to be original have consequences that are prosperous and fabulous and also challenging calling us up into a higher expectation or standard for ourselves because our spirit knows that there is so much better we are so much better than we give ourselves credit for as a human as a human and that transition that moment is indescribable it's it's as a piece and she's like I can't really feel it <clears throat> but I can see white just pure white like white light kind of thing and she says it it just it encompasses you and welcomes you home and the home is your spirit it's not a place this is not this afterlife is not a place and even your terms of energy when we speak of energy and you learn of energy it does not it really does not fully describe the experience of becoming pure spirit and recognizing that recognition that moment of recognition that there is so much more to us and I, not that I didn't know that prior but you can't even begin to understand it's the tip of the tip of the iceberg to understand just the enormous depth and the vastness of the universe that you are that consciousness that you are that we are and there is a oneness that it feels so all of the things that I tried to create with community and my life and to challenge myself and to learn and to become more more than perhaps what my mind would have established for me it was such a personal personal journey a personal devoted devotion to self in the way that soul only soul can understand and practices like meditations and visualizations and affirmations and all of the wondrous the wealth of knowledge and information that you can you can take in although it helps it can help your mind to process the the truth of the experience what you get what you receive from those teachings is not anything new to you as a spirit it it is already active within you in your soul in the library of your soul and what happens when you read a book like law of attraction i know bridget you are interested and when perhaps interested isn't the right word you enjoy the vibration but you don't understand the words of the message and do you know that that is okay that is actually rather more important 
to feel and receive the message in a vibrational state allows your soul to process that because it connects, the magnets connect, the part of your soul, space inside that library that knows that content, that material, that topic connects to that book, that audio, whatever you may be connecting to and then opens it up exponentially, exponentially. And the power of prayer works that way as well. And I should um, share as well that when you do pray or set intentions or send vibrations out to other people, whether they are in human body or whether they are in spirit body, know that there is the prayers go to the souls. They go to the the soul part of the person, not the human part. And that is why the prayer does matter it has an impact because it can shift the energy of the soul so that it 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 compounds the light the the fact the fraction of light inside that soul when you are dealing with difficult situations or trauma or abuse or whatever you may be confronted with and things situations scenarios or circumstances affect all in different ways they are not the same. So someone, let's say, who has been mistreated in a argument or in an abusive situation may may have a, what you might perceive as someone who has not, not been in that situation or circumstance, you might perceive as that is more, more intensive, more traumatic, more impactful, more defining, more more of an effect on that person hurts that person more than say your situation or struggle if you have a struggle with money let's say finances so you would compare a financial situation or struggle with the struggle of relationship and abuse and you would say oh well who i don't need to worry that i'm silly and judge yourself for worrying about your things and feeling hurt hurt actual hurt pain because of that situation and feeling like it's not justified for you to feel pain or hurt or which creates feeling of guilt, which creates resistance everywhere. It's like a cancer that spreads through the energetic system that affects the human body and expression of your experience. But the abuse situation and the financial situation could have the very, very, very similar impacts on the people, the individuals, the different people, very different people, because of the nature of their soul path, their soul plan, and the way things are unfolding for them. So I understand that this concept, these concepts are very foreign, and it seems difficult to compare someone who's being abused with someone who has financial trouble, thinking, well, you created your situation. Well, in both circumstances, that is the case. There's a co-creation, not perhaps not consciously, of course. No one asks to have financial struggles. No one asks to be abused or beaten. But the challenge, the, the, the triggers for us are the guilt, the shame, the, the judgment, which is why the affirmation and the the giving the positive energy so much momentum so that the mind recognizes the positive energies as your natural state. That's a normal, typical routine for you to meditate, to pray, to learn, to listen to things that do inspire you. Those things can help to serve and actually shift the environment in the mind so that the brain leans more toward energy that is like the positive energy than the negative, which you would consider positive and negative. And so negative thoughts don't can't linger as long because they get swallowed up by the positive. But the opposite is also true. And, and it does take some, it really does, Bridget does not want to hear this. It does take training, training the mind. That is what you're trying to do, truly, to convince the mind that all of this stuff that is not tangible is 
very real and it is so helpful and on board with the best life experience. And that training occurs through things that you seek out as individuals through utilizing your card decks or through listening to a podcast or interviews from people that have different views than you even you do not have in fact in fact it would rather benefit you more to listen to something where people do not necessarily agree you do not necessarily agree or know what their positions are how they're teaching and it it's not about i agree or i disagree it's about the alignment when i say agreement is alignment so a particular topic of teaching might be something you're interested in, but it's not something you've considered or it seems a bit too out there for you. That's because your mind isn't there yet to be able to really grasp it. But if you stretch yourself and listen to things that you don't really think you're not really sure about, that sound kind of weird, obviously with credible and intellectual teachers that have a similar vibrational energy to you, then you can challenge your mind's thinking and open a bit of perspective. But if it's too different, it doesn't work. And I'm not suggesting that you listen to things that are completely devoid of your values. The values that you have are a guidepost for you to, to assure that you are in alignment. But so a topic there are many spiritual teachers that Bridget does not listen to. In fact, most. And she says that it's because she wants to stay pure to her nature and to allow the learning to unfold organically, which is is a an approach you can take or a tactic or strategy to, to learning. However, there, there are benefits to listening to other spiritual teachers, not just the kind that are in spirit. Okay, uh, okay, I kind of thought about, I'm going to tell everybody, I kind of thought about just talking to her myself without talking to all you guys, then you guys all listen, but I thought, oh my gosh, Louise, hey, how can I not share? And you, it's interesting because as soon as I connect with you, Louise, it feels like I'm plugged into you and I just, I'm at, I, we're having a dialogue and I'm just sharing your responses. Like I'm asking her stuff and she's, I'm, she's just sharing, sharing, sharing. Fantastic. This is Fantastic. This is fantastic. Okay, so I have more stuff too. So I want to ask about, um, I really, I kind of want to gossip a little bit and I got to keep myself from doing that. I want to ask about stuff going on with um, the business, with your company now. Um, and when I say gossip, I mean um, new authors or authors that are no longer selling things. So um, I know you have a dear, dear friend in Cheryl Richardson. Um, and she does a lot of self-care work. If you guys aren't familiar with her, you can check her out. And um, I kind of, I don't really, I mean, Cheryl's, Cheryl's got some resources that could be um, helpful to people. Um, and uh, I'm trying to think. Hmm. Interesting. All right, so I'm looking at all the card decks. I love card decks, and I really, and I love, um, I enjoy the Esther Hicks, or Abraham Hicks stuff. Esther Hicks is a fantastic channel. She channels a group of energy, um, like a divine universal consciousness um, that she calls Abraham, that's called Abraham. So she's, it's like law of attraction um, energy, and Esther is an incredible channel. Oh my goodness, if you don't know about her stuff, uh, that's that's something that in, that's a good input for me. I just I could listen to her just talk and it just feels good. That's what Luis was chatting about. Um, Dr. Wayne Dyer has a huge library of resources and information, and I do from time to time. He's the one that I have listened to on audiobook when I've been doing long drives and stuff. It's been a while though. It's been at least a couple of years since I've done that. Um, I feel like there's some other people that. Um, there, there's just so many, there's so many there. So many different topics, totem animals, spirit guides, um, rocks, crystals, different kinds of card decks and styles of readings and uh, tarots and lineage, different lines of lineage for cards and 
there's um, astrology and there's just energy, different kinds of energy working and positive like life coaching stuff and health stuff, wellness. And there's just so many incredible resources. I mean, I just can't even, there's so many, there's so many. All right, so abundance. Can we talk about abundance? Will you specifically talk about that? Because I feel like you are someone that as a person, you, it almost feels like you just had so much gratitude and it feels like you were more carefree. Um, like I'm talking about as a person, I'm reflecting as a person, not as a psychic connecting your energy, but it seems like to me that you are like a master of abundance because you did what you loved and you supported other people. And I'm sure you had challenges during your business stuff and and even running, having, you know, trusting people to run the business and bringing people in and stuff. But it feels like you, it feels like you, she says, I'm very, I was very, I was very particular. I was very particular. Okay, because I feel like, um, like I think for an example of abundance, that's you. Because it feels like you're true to your values. You're true, you're, you have a mission that served other people and also fulfilled so much for yourself and, and lifelong learning. And I love those qualities. Those are things that I, I value very, very much. So lifelong learning and helping other people through your mission, being fulfilled, doing work you love, and learning, you know, that lifelong learning, those are so awesome for me. I just, oh, I'm so connected to that. Can you talk about abundance? Will you share some nuggets of wisdom about abundance? She's sharing that, okay. She says, listen, Bridget, listen. Listen to me with your heart. She says, so I invite you all to do this with me. Listen to me with your heart, she says. I can barely breathe right now, I need to exhale. All of a sudden I felt like, was I holding my breath? So I'm exhaling. Listen, with, listen to me with your heart, she says. So I invite you to do the same. This is how you channel abundance, she says. It's already existing. It's already in existence. It is a natural essence to your being. And it, it reflects all of those values or those qualities that you have already identified and, and very eloquently, she says. The impression that comes forward is the energy of the ability to influence in positive ways to create change that ripples and that you are in the position to fully receive and embrace. So the energy of the fullness of this heart of abundance channeling is not that it is separate from you or it is something you have to earn or attain. That is where we are mistaken in the mindset. It is a natural, organic flow, a presence of an essence. It comes into you only for the purpose of refilling, fulfilling, and creating a circle that is never broken, ever broken. So therefore, it is never away from you you are always receiving. And to be in a state of receiving, we feel as though that is a moment or an event, but it is not, that is not the case. It is particles of light that are gathering together, connecting together to shine brightly in the direction of the desires that you wish to manifest. And to manifest is not the fulfillment of a dharma or a life purpose or a goal. It is the fulfillment of soul, of all, of oneness. That is what it is. And the achievement of that never fully happens because it is always growing and expanding and it's, it's breathing like lungs, like I can see the lungs like that. 
breathing. It's giving and receiving. It's expanding and receiving. Expanding and receiving. Think of this growth. It's not about bringing more. It's about feeling the flow in that heart of what is already there. And it's amplifying the privileges of acknowledging what is already there and accessible to you whether it be your own gifts or your skills, amplify, amplify, turn it up, turn it up and expand and receive and expand and receive. Both of these are like breathing the universe. This is the fulfillment of the achievement of all soul, of the oneness. It's a soul community. She's using the word community. I keep feeling like the community of souls, the community of souls, the community of souls. That would be a beautiful book, actually. Luis, I wish you were here to write that. Community of soul. Community of souls. Souls. Community of the soul. Community. And soul isn't even accurate. It's this light. It's this everything. It's matter and non-matter. It's, it's all and it's nothing. It's so translucent transcendent it's i can't even touch it it's just this beautiful this attraction of the loving light-filled energy and that is what abundance is that is what abundance is and the expression of the abundance it 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 has to be coordinated with your mind And so do you see, that's why the mind is so important to have so much positive energy, choosing the positive, the constant uh, training of the mind is to choose activities and, and, and connect with people who do provide the energy support that creates just the atmosphere is just love and whatever is possible and an excitement about what's next and what can we make and creating and sharing and learning and listening. Listening is receiving. Listening is receiving. Can you hear me say that? Listening is receiving. And in these ways, then the mind can express abundance so that you can actually see it in your life, in your human eyes. It just, it happens. My business, you spoke about my business, Bridget, and I know that you have so, I do feel the appreciate, the gratitude, the appreciativeness of your genuine, genuine adoration of my business and the model and that, the, the only reason that unfolded was because of this the connecting to the energy and doing my healing work and doing my healing work meant this the circle that's never broken the receive and expand and receive and expand that's what it means and then the mind with all the positive the consistent now it doesn't mean i never felt negative i battled with depression i battled with at times there was debilitating depression and it looks like there's issues. It looks like maybe alcoholism or there's some other things around you or, or you. I'm not sure if it was friends or you. I'm not, I can see it in your environment. And so the negativity happens. It is part of the awareness. It awakes you up so that you acknowledge, you recognize, oh, I'm not in my positive training. I'm not in my positive she keeps saying training like you got to teach yourself again and again and you have to be in this learning it's not about it's not about like going to college or reading books or getting a spiritual teacher some of that yes may come into your positive input that may become into your um, positive vibration i use the word positive input she uses vibration by positive vibrations like i literally feel it breathing expand really expand Expand. It's like receive. When you receive, then you can expand. When you receive, then you can expand like that. Just, oh, wow. This is incredible. There's a lot here. I should just have a session with you myself about business stuff. 
<laughs> just because it's fast. It is fascinating to me. I wish she would have written a book about business. She said, there's so much good information out there. But she said, you just need to be in alignment with yourself. She says, that's all that really matters. If you are being who you are, then everything else will truly fall into place. It will. And until you are fully who you are, it won't. You will have disrupt disruptions or discrepancies. And and do you know do you know that that's okay? Because that's part of the learning. That's okay. It's part of the learning. But that's if if I had to give you advice, Bridget, or if I had to give you a piece of information, it would be that to just be who you are. Be who you are. And there is recognition that you grow and you change and you evolve. So you're always constantly learning something new about yourself. You're getting closer to being who you are in the awareness of your acknowledgement of that. And that's when the mind comes in. That's where the brain, the brain comes in. This is awesome. Oh my gosh, I feel good. Do you guys feel good? I hope she like conveyed energy. Like, wow, I cannot wait to watch this. I gotta wrap this up so I can watch it. <laughs> All right, thank you so much, Luis. Hey, what's our channeling today? This is Bridget with Above Life Channel. Remember, the purpose of this channel is to inspire your spirit, and I hope we did that today. I hope we filled you up with some hopeful energy. Remember, it's your life, so live it. Thanks for being here. <laughs>